Number 10, Ash's Coma. So, coming up first on this list of creepy Pokemon pasta is gonna be Ash's Coma. In short, this pasta or theory is pretty simple. The accident at the beginning of the Pokemon TV show, when Ash gets shocked by Pikachu and breaks Misty's bike, this theory says that it was actually a critically damaging incident, and that the entire Pokemon TV show is actually Ash dreaming while he's in a coma, letting his mind heal while he fantasizes about traveling the globe with his friends, fulfilling his dream of becoming a Pokemon master with all the trials he goes through being products of his little damaged psyche, like he's doing a little Jacob's Ladder thing. Gosh, there's a reference the kids get. This one I felt had to be at number 10, because as scary or as interesting as it might be, saying somebody in a kid's show was secretly dead the whole time is like, I don't know, that's bottom of the barrel fan theory stuff. We can do way better than that. In fact, I think we can do nine creepypastas better, to be honest. So, number nine, Tarnished Gold. First of all, absolutely love the name of this one. Tarnished Gold sounds like a perfume from Elden Ring. It's a creepypasta about another hacked copy of Pokemon Gold and Silver. The narrator starts a new game, and instead of the usual intro with Professor Oak, is treated to a monologue of someone explaining that Pokemon are actually just tools to be used and not friends, which is like the opposite of what's true if you've ever seen a single episode of the Pokemon show. It's like, you know, nothing. When the game starts properly, you find that you're playing as the rival character, Silver, not Gold. Bizarrely, you can't name the Pokemon. On. And when you try, a dialogue prompt pops up and tells you not to love them, which is just so unbelievably funny, it's got no business being in a ghost story. Eventually, the plot gets pretty out there in this game. Mewtwo and Team Rocket end up causing the deaths of all your Pokemon, and eventually the main character even too. This one actually does sound kind of interesting, and I'm curious if anybody's ever tried to make like a playable version of it like some of the other games on this list. Number 8. Blue Tears. Our next creepypasta is Blue Tears. I gotta just say, all of these names sound like they could be fragrances. This story is about another hacked Pokemon copy that gets acquired at a mysterious garage sale. At some point, they gotta organize a big swap meet for cursed Pokemon games, because there's clearly a lot of them out there being circulated, and it must be so tough to find them at a garage sale. Anyway, it was a copy of Pokemon Blue that said tears on it. When the game started, you're treated to a strange monologue from someone complaining of everything being taken from them. And then the game starts inside a cemetery with the rival character, either being named Blue or Gary, whatever you prefer, staring at a gravestone and proclaiming he'll get his revenge. Instead of Pokemon battles now, the only gameplay is trying to track down the previous protagonist that read and get revenge for losing all your Pokemon. Instead of Pokemon, you have a knife in your inventory, and as the person kept playing the game, they started bleeding from the nose, and look, I'm gonna be honest, this one's just a little bit silly to me. It's not written the best either. There's a bit in this story where they mentioned that they were really scared because they got into a trainer battle and they couldn't run away, and I was sitting at my chair kind of shaking my head like, uh, you can't run away from trainer battles anyway. It's a trainer battle, not a wild Pokemon encounter, duh. Is that a pedantic reason to discount this story? Entirely, but I'm a very pedantic guy. Number seven, Yellow Death. Tarnished gold, blue tears, yellow death. I, I can't with all of these. They sound very high end. Anyway, the narrator of this creepypasta is working at a game store when they get an unusual copy of Pokemon Yellow given to him, and someone asks him to fix it. And he says that it's the game is stuck. He's frozen and his Pokemon keep dying. The clerk is amused by this and says he'll take it home to give it a try to see what he can do. The game appears normal, except the cartridge has Pikachu's eyes scratched out, which is unnerving to say the least. The game seems normal at first, although it's glitchy. And then the cursed Lavender Town music is playing all throughout. The storyline progresses normally, but when you get to Lavender Town, when you're dueling that ghost, the player's Pikachu faints and is replaced with a gravestone implying Pikachu died. Rest in peace, big homie. As the player keeps coming back to try and battle the ghost, he finds that his Pokemon keep dying until eventually he runs out of Pokemon and his own character had died too. Restarting the game now inside the player's bedroom, but now transparent and missing all items from the inventory. And the person who gave the clerk that original copy of the game never came back for it. And the clerk understood why. Number six, Hypno's Lullaby. This one's not as much of a creepypasta as the others, but it's almost like an in-universe creepypasta, if that makes sense. It's not a story about a haunted game affecting somebody who got it at a swap meet or something. It's a spooky little nursery rhyme about Hypno, who has always stood out to me as one of the creepier Pokemon as is. I mean, look at the guy. I don't like the look of his eyes. That whole evolution, really, there's something a little bit off about Drowsy, too. Both of those two are up there with Mr. Mime for Pokemon. I would never feel safe being in a room around. Anyway, this creepypasta makes Hypno out to be like the Pokemon version of Freddy Krueger. Take a listen. Come little children, come with me. Safe and happy you will be. 
Away from home now let us run. With Hypno you'll have lots of fun. Oh little children please don't cry. Hypno wouldn't hurt a fly. Be free to frolic. Be free to play. Come with me to my cave to stay. Oh little children please don't squirm. Those ropes I know will hold you firm. Now look to me the pendant calls. Back and forth your eyelids fall. Minds unraveling at the seam allow me to haunt their dreams. Do not wail and do not weep. It's time for you to go to sleep. Little children, you were not clever. Now you'll stay here forever. Oh, I'm worried I just casted like a spell reading that out. If any of you start noticing that you're cursed afterwards, I'm very sorry about that. Number five, Pokemon Black. Coming up next is gonna be the story of Pokemon Black. Now, if you're a Pokemon fan, you know they actually did end up making a Pokemon Black down the line on the 3DS, and this one was way before that. This is about a creepypasta about a hacked game. Anyway, Pokemon Black was a hack of the original two games, with the intention being to make a more spooky Pokemon, you know, if you thought that it wasn't scary enough. Instead of starting with one of the original three starters, I was always a Charmander guy, BT Dubs, sliding that in there, you get the ghost from Lavender Town as your starter Pokemon. Other Pokemon aren't able to attack it at all, and its only move is Curse, which was always a one-hit takedown. And if they fought a trainer, each defeated Pokemon would be shown as being removed from the roster instead of just fainting. And when the trainer was defeated altogether, the sprite would be replaced with a gravestone. The implication, pretty clear. After leaving a trail of shallow graves around Kanto, when you beat the Elite Four, you get a flash forward of Red as an old man, remembering all the Pokemon and trainers he stepped on to get to where he is. And then his ghost turns on him, and the save file is deleted. Now the story's cool enough, the hack is pretty fun, but what makes Pokemon Black actually pretty cool is that it's been made into an unofficial fan game for those who want to experience that creepypasta firsthand, which is so, so cool. Not for me though, I'm not willing to take Take any risk with any curses, even from a fan Pokemon game. Number four, Strangled Red. Coming up next is another scary hacked Pokemon game. I don't know about you, but I kind of find those ones to be my favorite of the creepy pastas. I like thinking about some madman sitting alone in his room at night creating a haunted Pokemon game instead of a ghost coming into a cartridge. In Strangled Red, our protagonist finds a Pokemon Red cart in the trash, which is how you know this story is fake, by the way, because an original Pokemon Red cart is like 500 bucks. Anyway, the narrator finds the game, takes it home to play, and doesn't realize the game's been hacked. Instead of playing as Red, the usual silent Pokemon protagonist, they play as a character named Steven, who's been fleshed out and has a rival named Mike, and they've got a realistic relationship and everything. At one point in the game, the player trades their precious Charizard to Mike, and a loud snap was heard. And the next time the narrator tried to play the game, they found that their Charizard had died, and the game becomes about trying to revive the Charizard by any means possible. Honestly, it's a fun little story about the connection you have to your Pokemon, and the narrative trying to tie into the plot of the original Pokemon game is neat, but man, that is a lot of work for a ROM hack just to throw it away. Number three, Snow on Mount Silver. All right, this one's kind of halfway cool, to be honest, but like halfway. This one's about a sister and brother who grow up loving Pokemon games together, and as part of a shared hobby, they try to learn to mod games together. <laughs> Eventually, something happens to the protagonist's brother, and he has a psychotic break and tries to destroy his copy of Pokemon and asks his sister to get rid of all of his Pokemon while he's in the hospital. And the first thing the protagonist notices is that in his game, all the Pokemon seem to look different, sad and sullen. The character is trapped on Mount Silver, the frozen mountain, and nothing the player can do seems to be able to get them out of this situation. And their Pokemon slowly would start to succumb to frostbite. Every time the player tries to escape or leave or anything, a text bot pops up telling them that there is no escape. And eventually the Pokemon start dying. One one by one. Red is still atop the mountain, just like in the original game, but when they try to have a Pokemon duel, all of their Pokemon just end up dying from the frost. After the duel, the game flashes a bright white screeching, and when turned back on, Pikachu's face was distorted, twisted, and waiting for the player. Yeah. Number two, Lost Silver. Another story about a mysterious, creepy, hacked copy of a Pokemon game acquired by someone unknowingly. Like a lot of these Pokemon creepypastas, you get home and you turn the game on and discover someone else has already made a save file with a party of unknown that spell out leave and a Cyndaquil named Hurry. It's not the best nickname, to be honest. The player's save file was just named dot 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 
which is pretty spooky. As the story goes on, the unknown will change to start spelling scary messages. And as the game keeps going forward, the player starts fading more and more, turning transparent, the sprite losing their arms and legs and replacing them with bloody stumps, bloody tears down the eyes, which is pretty darn creepy to be honest. I saw a lot of fan art for this trying to write this thing and yeah, you guys are drawing some creepy stuff out there. You keep going in the game and eventually you reach a cemetery and you realize the character you've been playing has been dead the entire time. A master trainer who was forgotten by the next generation after their unfortunate death. Like a couple of other ones, some fans actually did end up making this ROM hack in real life. So if you if you're curious about playing this haunted Pokemon game, look it up online, or hey, look up any of the playthroughs available. I gotta ask, how come all of these stories are about the first two games? How come no ghosts is, are up there haunting a copy of Pokemon Emerald? Number one, Lavender Town. Ah, you already knew it had to be this one. Coming in at the number one spot, it has to be Lavender Town Syndrome. Easily the scariest Pokemon creepypasta, and I'm gonna be for real with you, probably the scariest creepypasta actually out there. This one genuinely used to keep me awake at night. Admittedly, I was a child, but for real. If you haven't heard of this one, the quick story of Lavender Town Syndrome is that the theme composed for Lavender Town, that legendarily hair-raising piece of music, was even more sinister than it sounds, as it allegedly contained hidden binaural beats that would make the listener aggressive, homicidal, depressed, and all sorts of terrible mental states. In some versions of the legend, it's only present in Pokemon Red, connecting to a rumor that series director Satoshi Tajiri thought the color red was too violent and this was the sort of way to get payback. Unlike a lot of creepypastas, this one doesn't have any ghosts or possessions or hacked copies and is really down to earth and just believable enough to truly get under your skin and get terrifying. It also helps that Lavender Town by default is super creepy. The music is scary, and I think we can all agree as kids, we all were kind of freaked out by this, a little village where they all worship dead Pokemon, right? Now what's super fascinating about this is that the Western and Japanese versions of Pokemon Red and Blue actually do have ever so slightly different versions of the Lavender Town music, and that's the only different music between the two copies. So why did they do that? Just a little bit of a regional flavor? Or is there something more to that music? Number 10, Lavender Town Syndrome. Of course, what would this list be without one of the most all time famous creepypastas, Lavender Town Syndrome. Lavender Town Syndrome is so prevalent in Pokemon rumor circles that I actually thought it was based on some kind of like, facts were a true story when I first heard about it. That's how real and creepily plausible it felt to me. While not real, it is still super disturbing. The idea here is that Lavender Town Syndrome in this creepypasta is a mental defect basically or a mental illness that one could catch after being exposed to the original tones of the Lavender Town theme. Now those who suffered from the syndrome would become depressed with it being reported that hundreds or thousands of them even took their own lives. These reports of course were false because it's not a real thing, but still it's super creepy. And friends, before we move on to this next spot on our list, if you love what we do here at Top 10 Gaming, why not show us you love it and show us your love for creepypastas by hitting the like button on this video so we can give you more creepypastas. Number nine, bad Pokemon. Everyone thought that my Squirtle was the most well-behaved Pokemon ever, and it was because of this that I was punished. Squirtle, of course, could do no harm. Squirtle was cute, Squirtle was helpful, Squirtle only wanted what was best for me. My friends, my parents, that's what everyone said. But what they didn't know was that it was Squirtle, not me, that drowned the Rattatas and laid them out to rot in the boiling sun on our lawn. It was Squirtle, not me, that emptied the gas tank in Dad's car and replaced it with water. It was Squirtle, not me, that wrote that note warning of the harm that would come to the neighbors if I wasn't locked away. But now I am locked away while Squirtle is inside my home, eating my food, sleeping in my bed, perfect, sweet, harmless Squirtle. Number eight, Ash's Coma. This is a long one, so time for a summary. I'll summarize it as best I can. What if in Pokemon everything wasn't as it first appears? What if Ash wasn't on a journey to become the best Pokemon trainer of all time, a Pokemon master? What if he was actually comatose? That is the theory this creepypasta poses. With each friend and ally, each enemy, each gym leader, and every 
every Pokemon representing a different aspect of Ash, who moves through a much more idyllic world in comparison to the real one. Unaware he is in a coma, there are parts of him that try to wake him up and make him see the truth of his situation, while other parts still attempt to maintain the fantasy world of his dreams, wanting to continue there and there alone. Eventually, Ash does wake up but too late, dying without ever having truly lived, only realizing the truth of his situation as he lays there breathing his last. However, winding back the clock, there also exists in this multiversal story a reality where Ash does wake up before being taken off life support and manages to recover and live. In fact, this version sees him begin his own adventures in the real world, a darker one than his dreams and without any of the cast of characters and friends he has known for years in his coma that never existed, but a world where he can finally venture out. Number 7. Another Soul Has Been Claimed Part 1 this creepypasta is only signed H, so I that is all I can credit it to. And even then, the person writing it might not have been the original writer as it was sourced as having an origin elsewhere, so forgive me if I'm not giving you the original author there with H. However, that is the way with creepypastas, isn't it? As they are all basically passed around, so lots of different versions and lots of different people claiming to have written them. This is also a long one, so I'll be sharing it over the course of multiple points. So make sure you stay tuned to hear the whole story. You're gonna want it with this one because this one's pretty creepy. Zach got the best gift for his birthday. While he'd received a lot of great gifts, this one took the cake. It was from his father and was a black Pokemon game. Excited, Zach put it straight into his DS and got to playing before bed. The hour was growing late eventually and Zach thought about saving the game and shutting down his DS when he saw a Pokeball on the ground in game. He decided to pick it up and noticed that within it was a Haunter that was somehow designated as being level infinity. The Haunter had a full meter that instead of being labeled as EXP experience was marked SLS. Using the Haunter would diminish the SLS stat and seem to petrify his opponents, with a message coming up after he defeated his opposing Pokemon that read, another soul has been claimed. Number 6. Hypno's Lullaby Hypno's Lullaby is a creepypasta based around the story of how Hypno is a dangerous and deadly Pokemon that will basically lull you into a false sense of security before murdering you. Well, usually it kidnaps you, then it murders you, but yeah. The real wild thing about Hypno's lullaby is that it actually is kind of backed up by in-game evidence, including a time where you, in-game, have to help save a girl from being hypnotized by a Hypno. Not only that, but Hypnos are known for actually kidnapping people in the lore of the game, so yeah. There exists a ROM hack too, where you are also forced to go into Berry Forest, a home for the Hypnos, where you become lost, trapped, and must face death pretty much around every corner. And then of course there is also the fan made theme known as Hypnos Lullaby, which is what we're really talking about here. If you haven't heard the lullaby, it is super disturbing. It's supposed to be the song that Hypno sings to lure its victims away, and is of course inspired by this creepypasta. And it's set to the melody of Lavender Town for added creepy effect, which is just, it's just great. Number 5. Another Soul Has Been Claimed Part 2. Tired and frightened of his experiences with Haunter in game, Zack attempted to turn off his DS. But when he found that his DS was unresponsive, he decided to lob it against the wall, terrified. It smashed, and he cried, but not willing to go near it, he just decided to fall asleep. In the middle of the night, however, he awoke, screaming from a night terror. He had dreamed the Haunter had come to life and got him. When he went to the bathroom, his nose was bleeding, and Zack observed so were his ears and his eyes. After cleaning up, Zack looked into the mirror only to see the twisted face of the Haunter gazing back at him. Look into my eyes, master, it said with a horrible low and garbled voice, and witness the last thing you'll ever see. It smiled. Oblivion. Number 4. Pokemon Black Another Soul Has Been Claimed isn't the only Pokemon creepypasta to focus on the infamous Pokemon Black game. This one is solely forgive the pun, about the experience of playing this game and things that you actually might experience were you to play it. Case in point, a haunter that becomes more creepy the more you see it, that attacks not just opposing Pokemon, but trainers, turning them into tombstones upon defeating them, and that also tends to scream a lot. In the end, it's said you can use the haunter in the hacked Pokemon Black game to curse the world after defeating the Elite Four. Beating them with haunter will result in a cutscene which supposedly takes place years in the future. In this bleak future reality, 
reality, every NPC is replaced by a tombstone. And old and feeble, you are forced to face the only other survivor in this world. The same haunter that doomed everyone that was once your Pokemon years ago. As the old man version of yourself when you go into this battle, the only move you have is struggle. Eventually, the haunter will use curse on you one final time, and after the screen fades to black, the player will notice that their save file has been erased. Number 3, another soul has been claimed, part 3. When Zack's mom got home from work early the next morning, the house was a mess. The furniture was tossed and smashed, and she worried that a break-in had happened while she was at work. As she searched for her family in the house, she found her husband, Zack's father, mortally wounded on the couch and near death. He warned her not to go upstairs, but in a frenzy, she resisted his advice. Calling the cops, she went upstairs to her son's room. It was empty. Zack was nowhere to be found. Something wet dripped onto her shoulder. She touched it, rubbing it between her fingers. Blood. She looked up and screamed. Number 2. Be careful what you wish for My mom once told me that wishing on a shooting star would make all your dreams come true. One day I did just that. As I saw the star fly over me at night, I wished really hard. What did I wish for? If I told you, it wouldn't have come true. And well, maybe I should have told you. I never thought this would happen. I forgot this was even a Pokemon ability. I can't stop shedding my skin. Number 1. Another soul has been claimed, part 4. The final part. By the time the police came, Zack's father was dead. They found another person in the home, at least they thought it was a person. It was so mutilated they couldn't make out who it had been in life. Venturing upstairs, the sight in Zack's room caused them all to run out into the hall, vomiting. Zack's body was there, hanging, missing eyes and with his back torn open. There was a note on his body that fell to the floor as they bent over, sick to their stomachs. It landed in a pool of blood and black ooze. The message written on it in human blood read, Another soul has been claimed. In a tent trapped in a cave. It was night. The wind was blowing ferociously, so I tried to find a cave. As I did, I saw a light nearby. I hid to make sure I wasn't attacked, but I saw a terrible sight. A Charizard and what I can only assume was his trainer were nearby. The trainer was on the ground, missing both of his legs. The Charizard looked terrible, like it was crying. I heard the trainer ask his Charizard, who he called Ruby, if she was hungry. She shook her head, but even I could hear her stomach rumble. He insisted that she tell him when she's hungry, since he wanted to help, but she continued to shake her head, telling him that she wasn't. As he pet her with his one remaining arm. Ruby hugged him, her eyes getting watery. Ruby, if you don't eat, you'll starve. Ruby then began to cry hard, but her trainer reassured her that it's okay and that she had to eat. The man extended his arm towards Ruby, who stared at him, trying to hold back tears, and she reluctantly opened her mouth while the trainer slid his arm between her fangs. Go on, he said, and she did. The man went to sleep, then Ruby cried even harder, because she knew what would happen the next time she got hungry. Jesus! Okay. If you're as depressed as I am now, hit the like button. It really helps us out. It helps boost us in the algorithm. And it also lets us know that you want more terrifying Pokemon creepypastas that just make me want to hug my dog. And at 9, Demise. It only happened once, the evisceration of the Kalos region. It happened oh so long ago that I don't even think the elders remember, but I do. I'm not like most elders. I am a Z, and I remember when the legendary Pokemon Yvetl finished off its first life cycle. It's unknown when it was born or created, but when it was finished with this mortal plane, it doesn't go quietly. The destruction was vast, and the casualties greater than even the Pokemon war that occurred afterwards. Kalos, the region which this Pokemon called home, was destroyed, leveled by what can only be described as a catastrophic event. The death of this Pokemon sucked the life of the region, as if the region sacrificed itself in order to preserve the Pokemon. Yvetl was saved and created a cocoon of sorts that acted as a shield for the upcoming few thousand years, until one group, known as Team Flare, decided that disturbing the Pokemon that caused the end of the region was a good idea. Of course, they didn't know about the evisceration, they only thought those were stories. But alas, I wait for the destruction of the region once more. And at H, how is that? I'm not kidding, that's actually how it's spelled. I know you're looking at me weird. Please don't, okay? I'm, I'm not meant to look like this. I used to be so happy. My friend loved me so much, but he would always hang out with his Charizard instead of me, since it was his starter after all. But it eventually ended up dying in a gym battle. He cried all day, and he thought another one would fix it, so he went to get another, but he was already carrying six of us. I told him that he could put me away for a little while. All I wanted to do was see him happy. So he did, but it was a very long time. While in the PC, I 
I could feel myself warping. It sounds strange, I know, but all I could feel was my skeleton being pushed and pulled in every direction. At first it seemed like there was no point to this, but over time the others in the PC did the same. They each started warping into something twisted. Something we all wanted to be for our friend, our trainer. Eventually we all warped into variations of the Pokemon our trainer had lost. We were all deformed Charizards combined with our original forms. I used to be a Bulbasaur, now I am a Charizard. Kinda. It had 7 Pokemon Deadly Y. It was the last day of school and I was screwing around, but then I noticed a Pokemon Y game still in its case laying on the ground. I picked it up and on the manual it said my gift to you from Noob. Whoever this Noob was had left the cartridge so I decided to see what kind of terrible team he had. The title screen looked horrible. It said press start to die and the bottom of the screen it had the number 666 along with two candles sitting between the numbers. When I clicked start the game flashed an image of dead people. I had to play this. I had to see what was going on. His save file was missing so I made a new one, but Oak was there instead of Sycamore and his face was distorted and he looked like he was going to die. Then he showed me Yvettel puking blood with bloodshot eyes and a bloody nose. Then he collapsed from his injuries. And it's six good night. I used to have trouble sleeping. I tried everything I could. Sleeping pills, NyQuil, more pills. I even tried Pokemon, but even Jigglypuff couldn't put me to sleep. But then I found her, Meloetta. Meloetta is like my soulmate. We work together in harmony. She helps put me to sleep, and I help her out with her mission. Everyone is sound asleep now. They were all having such a hard time. With the sun out, it's nearly impossible to sleep. But now, they can all sleep for as long as they want. Meloetta helps me sleep. She sings to me. It's like everything is a dream. Such a perfect life, singing and sleeping. It's essentially the life of my dreams. Get it? Get it? Because this is a dream. How we doing at number five? The fire. It was late, probably around two in the morning. The thunder was cracking, the lightning was flashing blue, and we saw a figure fly overhead. When it flew over the brass tower, that's when it caught. The fire spread quickly, despite the rain we thought would prevent it. My dear friends were inside, Sparky, Rainer, and Pyro. They loved to play in the tower, jump from post to post, battling and training themselves just for fun. I never thought it was an issue, but when the fire spread down, they were goners. Rainer tried to protect them. Sparky even took a lightning bolt for them, but nothing worked. Even Pyro stood in the flames and tried to absorb them. Nothing. Luckily, ho -Oh had a spot for them in his plane, and now whenever I see one of the legendary beasts, I smile and shed a tear for the boys I lost oh so long ago. Perhaps, after the plug is pulled, I will be with them once more. And it for Mount Silver. Years before you meet Professor Oak, he trained Red and got him to Mount Silver, but once Red gets there, he isn't heard from again. Oak travels there to see that Red has actually died, but his spirit is still there. All it says is help me. Oak had to find another trainer worthy enough to make it to Mount Silver in order to free Red. The Elite Four is positioned in the perfect place to assure that they are your final test before making the climb. And when you finally make it, Red is surprised to see you, but without speaking, he engages you in a climactic battle that wages for an hour. When you finally defeated him, he says nothing, but smiles and leaves as he can finally pass on. Not being able to say, but showing with his smile, thank you. Getting close to the end of the number three, flash caves. We all know that you don't need flash to get through dark caves, but it certainly does help. However, if you decide to take the dark route, there's actually a trick that works with every Pokemon game. If you walk around for a while, you will eventually find a ladder that isn't actually on the map. It will play the sound of walking downstairs four times, and then ask where you think you are. Then you are transported somewhere. You'll know when you can see and everything is in black and white. Eventually you will find yourself in a hole in the wall. Go through it and you will be free, but you won't be able to talk to NPCs anymore. In Pokemon Yellow, your Pikachu follower will become a ghost from the Pokemon Tower, and everything will still be in black and white. The only place where you can interact with trainers and Pokemon now is the cave where you use the glitch. However, every trainer you interact with says, do you know where you are? But ultimately, in number two, Dream of Darkness. It started as sleep paralysis. It's a fairly common phenomenon, at least for me, where your mind wakes up but your body doesn't. Some people say that their blind spots look like people, hence the term sleep paralysis demon, but mine didn't. Mine looked odd. It had legs, but they were long and pointed. The arms were similar in a way, with wide hands thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. It had what looked like smoke coming off of its shoulders, and its hair was similar. 
It stood there staring at me, but then it started moving. It reached out a hand and I watched it grab my face as if it was trying to wake me up, but instead I fell back asleep. It faded to black and in my room the demon was gone and I can finally move. It's still dark out, but my clock says 11am. Concerned, I walk down the stairs and I'm calling out to my parents asking them what's going on. They say nothing, so instead I call out to my sister. Nothing again. When I go down, I see why they weren't responding. They were what can only be described as spread out across the room. The ceiling and the walls were red, and their heads were removed. I close my eyes and I'm back in my room. It's still dark out, but my clock says 11am. Concerned, I walk down the stairs and I'm calling out to my parents asking them what's going on. They say nothing, so instead I call out to my sister. Nothing again. And finally, in a number one, save me. After being interested with Lavender Town Syndrome, I got a copy of the original game off of eBay just to see if it was real. When I got to Lavender Town though, there were no NPC. Just one boy in the Pokemon Tower who was running in circles. He was on every level. Whenever I interacted with him, he would just say, save me. Now, I didn't mention this before, but my rival's name was Tyler, because it was actually suggested, not because I chose it. But that's weird, because this game is Japanese. I get to the top floor of the tower and the room shaped like a T. And then, remembering my rival, I ask out loud if this is Tyler. The child turns around and says, yes, save me, then starts a Pokemon battle. But, he never threw out a Pokemon. He just stood there waiting. I ended up fainting him and he said thank you. I fell asleep after what felt like hours, but when I wake up, I'm in a car seat in the back of a car holding a different Game Boy. I get out of the car frantically, leaving the Game Boy there, and I get some change off the ground and use a payphone to call my girlfriend. She cusses me out, saying that I should have just told her I was leaving, but at least she sold that damn Pokemon game I bought for too much money last year. I had been dragged into the game, and now another kid had just taken my place. In a 10, Entei. Entei is just a giant dog, and there's nothing really wrong with that. But the real issue comes from when that dog is considering himself to be your father. Yeah, that's actually a thing. For those of you who don't know Pokemon the Movie 3, it was all about Entei and the spell of the unknown, as indicated by its actual name of the movie. The movie follows Ash and the gang as they set out to, wait for it, save a girl who was basically brainwashed by unknown after those same unknown sucked her father into their dimension. Then after she discovers those unknown unknown, they create an illusionary Entei that is meant to represent her father. This Entei then spends the movie being hella creepy and overly protective of this little girl, and along with the help of the unknown, they create a load of ice spikes to defend their home. And then he kidnaps her mother and brings her to Molly, who is the child, who doesn't believe her literal mother when she says that this isn't Entei, or like this isn't, this Entei isn't like actually your dad. Um, but like, yeah, this is literally the creepiest version of Entei that I have ever seen. Okay, he has he has some serious like Hollywood director vibes, if you know what I mean. Okay, he, he's like a, he's a little too fond of Molly. I I don't know. I don't, I know this is a kids movie and that's like not supposed to be the intention, but like just just the way that he's voice acted and stuff. I don't know. It it, it makes him slightly more terrifying than a normal Entei. And if you like Pokemon and want to see more of it on the channel, be sure you let us know by hitting that like button and subscribing. Okay. If you don't like the video, how are we supposed to know what you want to see more of? Exactly, okay, let's keep it moving. In a nine, Shadow Lugia. Shadow Lugia is a Lugia corrupted by the criminal organization of Cypher. Shadow Lugia is also believed to be the ultimate shadow Pokemon immune to purification. This is evident by its appearance, uh, which is very different to normal Lugia, uh, something that is actually unique to this legendary. Since all other shadow or corrupted Pokemon possess a shadowy aura instead, um, Shadow Lugia is just like pitch black, or I guess it's like a dark purple. Shadow Lugia appeared in the game Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, where it picks up a whole cruise ship, the SS Libra, and drops it into a desert, <laughs> allowing Cypher to capture all of the Pokemon on board. That's crazy, okay? This, this is like one of the scariest things ever. If the character of Professor Crane hadn't made it to the purif purify chamber in that game, Lugia would have been lost forever. And, and it would have been an evil and terrifying looking Pokemon, okay? You have to agree with me that Shadow Lugia is terrifying. But there are still more that make things even worse. For example, in a date, Darkrai. Darkrai is like the original Creeper Pokemon. Well, I, okay, I guess like the original Creeper legendary Pokemon, because Hypno is forever the Creeper Pokemon. However, Darkrai is one rude mother because he is, his whole intention is to ruin your day. Well, actually, 
your night because Darkrai is the pitch black Pokemon and loves to feast on dreams. But not just any dreams, no. This psycho has a taste for nightmares. If the Freddy Krueger of Pokemon causes you to, to if you don't think that that's scary, you're gonna, you're, you should be ashamed. If Darkrai causes you to have nightmares as well, by the way, they're never going to end. You'll be stuck in a coma-like state with constant nightmares for all of eternity, unless exposed to the Lunar Wing from Cresselia. Yeah, both Darkrai and Cresselia are considered the Lunar Duo, basically counteracting each other and being polar opposites. But like, do I need to explain why Darkrai is scary? It's the Freddy Krueger Pokemon. I shouldn't have to, okay? He's a freaking beast. He's uh, he's he's great, though. I, I love him. He's, he's such a good Pokemon. And his shiny, the pink Darkrai, that's kind of badass. And it's seven Giratina. Giratina or Giratina, I'm gonna say Giratina because it's pronounced GIF, is typically seen as the scariest legendary Pokemon. And you know what? It's easy to see why. Both the altered and origin form of Giratina are meant to look like the Pokemon Grim Reaper, with tattered wings and a dark color scheme composed of gray, red, dark yellow, and black. The Pokemon also lives in the distortion or reverse world, an alternate dimension where the laws of physics have no meaning. Yeah, so you're supernatural fans. Giratina represents antimatter, which I'm sure you'll understand why that that makes him scary, especially if you've seen or read Crisis on Infinite Earths from DC Comics. Giratina, according to the Pokedex in Pokemon Platinum, Black, White, Black 2, White 2, Y, and Alpha Sapphire, was banished to the Distortion World for its violence. This dude likes to scrap, and you, you shouldn't fight people who like to fight, okay? That's just a bad idea. And you, you know what? Get mad at me in the comments for saying Giratina all you want. It's not Jif. It's not Giratina, it's Giratina and GIF, okay? It's not, I don't give you a gift for, for your birthday, okay? Stop. And it's six Yvettel. Yvettel basically has control over death. It, it has the power to absorb life energy by spreading its wings and its tail feathers. And in the main series episode, The Legend of X, Y, and Z, Yvettel was shown turning a whole kingdom into stone, including Pokemon and people, okay? And then when it reaches the end of its life, it kills everything. Yeah, according to the Pokemon Y and Alpha Sapphire Pokedex, when its life comes to an end, it absorbs the life energy of every living thing and turns into a cocoon once more. So yeah, if this Pokemon dies, Everything dies, and apparently it's inevitable. Like, sure, the destruction may be contained to the to the Kalos region, but I doubt that. And even if it is, then literally anything and everything in that region will die. Like, what? The, the utter destruction of the world when Yvettel's life comes to an end? How is that not scary? How is this only number six? Halfway through in at number five, Zekrom. While being incinerated is scary, or I guess having the life force sucked out of you, at least Yvettel looks fairly majestic and like it wouldn't necessarily hurt something. Zekrom, on the other hand, will annihilate your whole kingdom with lightning, and he looks like he would enjoy it. And then he would also go steal your girl. Zekrom's tail emits an anti-gravity field, which he uses a fly, but like, do you know the implications of that? Like, do you walk near Zekrom and then you start floating higher and higher until you can't breathe anymore? Like, is that how it works? Or, or is this like cursed difficulty that Fundy made for Minecraft ages ago? This is, this is like some of the craziest that Pokemon could have thought of. This guy can also summon multiple thunderstorms at once in one area. What does ha what the hell does that even mean? Does that mean there could be like five thunderstorms at once? Is that what happens? Like that, that do you know how much panic that would cause? How does that even work? Would it just turn into a tornado? Would it cause a load of destruction? Probably, because he can destroy a whole kingdom with lightning. In a four Necrozma. Necrozma, in addition to looking terrifying, is just like the physical embodiment of a black hole in the Pokemon universe. It's pitch black, which is the result of impurities that built up inside the Pokemon during its deep slumber. It absorbs light, and once it absorbs enough of it, it, it can ultra burst to become Ultra Necrozma, a colossal dragon of pure light energy, because that's not going to cause some issues. It can also fuse with Solgaleo or Lunala, making even more terrifying versions of the Sun and Moon mascots. Okay, Necrozma originates from deep space and is able to open and travel through ultra wormholes. It had the ability to give light, but it was injured and partially broken, thus resulting in the spread of crystals capable of activating Pokemon's ability to use Z-moves. This Pokemon is not only a black hole, but it's the reason we can use Z-moves, okay? He also just looks horrifying. Necrozma is my sleep paralysis demon. Okay, it's just, if you feel like a hand on your chest, it's because of Necrozma. Look at those freaking chonker of a hand, man. Getting close to the end at number three, Kyrim. 
Kyrim is an absolute beast. This Pokemon looks absolutely insane. The design of the Pokemon okay, is really what makes me love Black and White and their sequels, be just because of this Pokemon. This design is some of like the peak Pokemon design in my brain, like not like this generation specifically, because there's literally an ice cream cone that evolves to get more scoops, but Kyrim is absolutely nuts. This Pokemon radiates freezing energy, so much so that due to a leak, the Pokemon's body became frozen, and it is said to have power that exceeds both Reshiram and Zekrom, but the cold ends up keeping it at bay. According to legend, Kyrim used to eat Pokemon and humans uh, if they were found outside at night. Um, so yeah, we can assume that he just hates everything, because at least like I mean, at least he ate them until he ended up getting himself frozen solid. Then I'm guessing he stopped. But this Pokemon is also able to fuse with either Zekrom or Reshiram, making the first fusion Pokemon. And even those Pokemon are terrifying. Like, sure, you can't have like one without the other, but like. Like still, holy crap, this thing is going to haunt my nightmares for the rest of my life. But ultimately, Anna number two, Arceus. Arceus or Arceus, whatever you want to call it, was basically the response to the rumor of Pokemon gods, like uh, Charcoal and the other main starter fourth evolutions. Arceus was introduced in Generation 4, the Diamond and Pearl era, and Arceus is also known as the original one, and is said to have created the Sinnoh and Ransai regions. Ransai is a region that appeared in Pokemon Conquest. Arceus is also potentially the creator of the entire Pokemon universe, as well as the late guardians of Azelf, Mesfirid, and Uxie, along with the creation trio of Dialga, Palkia, and Giratina. Arceus also has the ability to change its type on command by holding different elemental plates, and then takes on the weakness of that typing, as well as changing the color of its golden ring around the torso. Having to duke it out or even try to catch the god of Pokemon is absolutely terrifying, and not to mention that if if he didn't appreciate that, then he, and like, he went after you with all of his power power you'd be dead. He can literally just sing and you're dead in five turns. Plus, the, the shiny is just yellow, which makes it even more terrifying for some reason, just because the shiny is bad. And finally, in at number one, Eternatus. Eternatus is one overpowered beast, and its Eternamax form is nothing short of just massively, aggressively horrific. It's the worst thing that you'll ever see in a Pokemon game. This Pokemon is what created the Dynamax phenomenon in Pokemon Sword and Shield. And according to the Shield Pokedex entry, the Eternamax form of a Eternatus is also absorbing the energy from the Galar region, making it weaker while powering itself up. And it even ends up absorbing all of the energy in Galar thanks to Rose's meddling. Uh, it then pours out infinite amounts of energy and warps space and time around it. And what do you have to do in the game? Catch it. You have to catch it. You are literally holding a ticking time bomb in a ball in your pocket for the purpose of what? Beating the game a countless number of times, like sure, you had to catch it to save humanity, but do you know how terrifying that makes this Pokemon? Its name even implies that it's immoral, eternal. What if you die of old age, huh? Do you have to like keep it in the Pokeball, or does it does it just let it loose? That if it does, you'd, it would spell inevitable doom for society. But like even then, like do you have to like s like pass it on for generations and start forming like a cult, preserving this one Pokeball so that the world doesn't die? And then number ten is Lavender Town Syndrome. This turn of phrase, also known as Lavender Town Tone or Lavender Town Suicides, is extremely shocking to learn about. Back in February of 1996, when Pokemon Red and Green were released in Japan, they experienced a number of suicides and illness in children between the ages of 7 and 12. Apparently, these suicides came from the high frequencies that were played in the theme music of Lavender Town, and it's rumored that at least 200 children committed suicide, with many others developing illnesses and afflictions. It's known that children have very sensitive hearing, so the developers soon changed the tone of Lavender Town. And to study this phenomenon, the developers created a software to analyze this audio, but when it played, it creates images of the unknown, a character in the game Pokemon. This is a terrifying revelation because that character didn't even appear until later games and is said to translate to leave now. Number nine, buried alive. There are a ton of hacked Pokemon games out there, but this one was actually an intended original script for the game known as the Berryman script. It was initially meant to be a boss, but I believe it was just too freaky for players, especially considering their demographic. And in a battle view mode, the buried alive character looks like a decaying human corpse. And if you happen to lose the battle, the Berryman will say, 
finally fresh meat. Then you would drag your player into the ground. Following that, the typical game over screen would appear, but in the background, you can see the buried alive character devouring your player. Then suddenly, this creepy soundtrack and animation called Static Mesh would appear. <laughs> Followed by this disturbing message. What is that even supposed to mean? Like, it's also believed that it may have a similar effect to the lavender tone that I mentioned before. Number eight, Pokemon Lost Silver. After buying a used Pokemon Silver game, this player was weirded out to find the game they continued into from the previous player had 999 hours put into the game. All 16 badges and 99,999 Poke Dollars and all 251 Pokemon in the Pokedex. The only Pokemon in the player's arsenal were unknowns that spelled out the words leave, and a Cyndaquil named Hurry. After landing in a dark cave, the player used Cyndaquil's flash to see and soon regretted what they saw. The walls were covered in blood red. The player landed in a new dark room and again tried to use the flash, but then it just said Hurry has fainted. And the unknowns now spelt out the word he died. Now his character was white with bloody tears coming from his eyes. Plus his badge count kept changing first to 24, then to 32. The unknowns now spelt dying. After engaging in a battle with a Pikachu, his Pokemon didn't say fainted, it said it had died. Then the Pikachu also died. The character even comes across the Pokemon Gold Sprite that says goodbye forever. He then appears in a small room filled with graves and all the gym leaders at the bottom were replaced with skulls. The unknowns then spelt I'm dead. A final text came up on the screen that read RIP and the player could not escape, no matter what they pressed. It seemed as though this hacked copy was telling a story of a young trainer who, despite his efforts in becoming a Pokemon master, still couldn't avoid death and being forgotten by the next generation. Number seven, trapped in a cave. This creepypasta is more sad and disturbing than just scary, but still, it's a good one. It's a tale of a player who comes across a horrible sight in a cave. The only light seemed to be coming from the tail of a Charizard named Ruby. Ruby was with her trainer, but something was wrong. The trainer was missing his arm and both legs. Legs. Ruby appeared to be sad and afraid. The trainer repeatedly kept asking the Charizard if it was hungry, but Ruby denied, but its rumbling stomach told another story. The man insisted, eventually placed his arm in between Ruby's fangs. Eventually, the Charizard closed its eyes and bit off his arm, leaving only a head and torso. Eventually, the trainer falls asleep and the Charizard keeps crying and crying, as if it knew what was going to happen next when it got hungry. Number six, abandoned loneliness. This creepypasta revolves around a hack copy of Leaf Green, given to a friend and begins with an EV called Loneliness, except the E in loneliness is missing for some reason. And at the beginning, the player's name is Leaf and follows a number of very strange events and signs that take place in an area called Emptiness, not Pallet Town. After exploring, the player notices that this town is filled with these NPCs that appear to look like ghosts with blood coming from their eyes. The ghost constantly gives strange and evil advice to the character as they progress through the game. As fog covers most of the landscape, the player notices the tiles on the ground spelling out cryptic messages. One of the ghosts even says, can't you do better? The signs and ghosts continue to warn of a friend who betrayed loneliness. Leaf even sees the game's rival Blue pleading to not believe the ghosts and to run before they get you. The player finds out that Blue abandoned loneliness and after several creepy messages including one from Brock who said the ghost tricked him, the player shuts off his game. Months later, he picks it back up again but everything is different. His character is called Soro and his Eevee is a different Pokemon named unwanted. He eventually enters into a battle with a wild Eevee named Loneliness and when he defeats it, the player turns into one of those ghosts and is now said to be cursed as well. Suddenly, he's in Palatown again where red and blue say that Leaf got the brunt of the curse. He interacts with a signpost nearby and it just says Loneliness was put to rest. R.I.P. Number five, Disabled. So far, a lot of these creepy things coming from the Pokemon series have a lot to do with strange sounds or frequencies, and this one's no different. Our player in this story was absolutely in love with two characters, Jigglypuff 
and Wigglytuff. When she buys Pokemon Soul Silver, she immediately sets out to capture a Jigglypuff. This takes some time though, but eventually she manages to catch one in the Safari Zone. No matter how high she leveled her new Jigglypuff, she always kept her Sing Attack because, well, she loved to hum along to the tune. Still set on getting her second favorite Wigglytuff, but understanding how difficult it was to even find Jigglypuff, she decides to put a high level Pokemon on the wireless trade board in hopes of someone trading a Wigglytuff. And well, she gets her wish, and someone trades her, but oddly the Pokemon is called Disabled in all caps. It has one move, Sing. Before entering into a battle with her new Pokemon, she loads up a couple TMs like Hidden Power, Swagger, and Explosion. She enters into a battle with her new Wigglytuff, but for some reason, Sing is disabled. She tries using Hidden Power for Wig, but it fails. She tries to run, but it fails. The words, wants to fight, comes up on the screen. Then, it gets weirder. Wigglytuff begins doing its own actions. Repeatedly, she sees disabled try to use Sing. Sing was disabled. Again, and again, and again this happens. The enemy suddenly appears sick, as if poisoned, and then flees from battle. But Wig doesn't stop. The text box fills the screen. Disabled use struggle. It struggled. Then more, saying, why can't I sing? Sing. Sing. The word sing now is flooding the screen. Then randomly an option appears saying, can you sing? Yes or no. The player hits no several times. And suddenly the speakers let out, just let out a large, like loud screeching noise, causing the player to drop her DS. Having enough of this weirdness, she tries trading the Wigglytuff and when a trade appears, she hits yes several times, begging for it to hurry. When the trade goes through, it was for a Cyndaquil. Its name was Hurry. Number four, Strangled Red. This creepy hacked game of Pokemon Red was found in a trash bin of all places, and it tells the story of a trainer named Steven and his best friend, a Charizard named Miki. Oddly, when the player starts up the screen, it just reads Pokemon Strangled Red version. Realizing it was a hacked game, he plays anyways. Although, it won't let him continue with the previous player's game, so he hits new game. The player's name was automatically set to Steven. He starts with a single Charmander named Miki, and everything about this game was just a bit different. His character had a smirk and long hair, his rival was actually his brother, and the starter bedroom had two of everything. The game played normally, just the storyline was different. Using the Charmander, it quickly evolved into a Charizard by level 25. As soon as the player reached Lavender Town, things started to get weird. He entered into a battle with his brother, blue and once they were successful, they had a dialogue back and forth at the house that was strange for a solo game. The NPC wanted Steven to trade him his Charizard Miki. After the no button wouldn't work, he reluctantly hit yes. That's when the game froze mid trade. He turned it off and when he restarted, the only option was continue. Except he didn't have the Charizard and was greeted with a text box that read one year later. When he checked his menu, the character was different. Its eyes were blank, the smirk was gone, and his long hair looked messy. Also. Miki was dead. The player pieced together that this character named Steven is actually the previous champion that then becomes your rival in other games. The town seemed to mourn his loss with almost presenting him with compassion for this disturbed character. And at this point the game takes over so the player takes Steven to Lavender Town where all of the NPC trainers seem to ignore him completely, all saying just go. Sometimes dead is best. To read the full story though, and ending as well, look up Pokemon Strangled Red. It's far too gruesome for me to continue from there. Number three, Braid. This is a creepy pasta that, that is great if you're looking for a good Halloween story to read. It occurs around Elix Forest and is told in three separate narratives that come together to create an unsettling atmosphere. Standing between the player and Goldenrod City, they know they have to enter the forest. An old tale about the history of Elix Forest involves villagers bringing baskets of food to the edge of the forest and we learn that it is left there for a witch in exchange of fruitful harvest each year. However, we learn that if they look at the witch while she is using her magic, the blessing will become a curse. This tremendous creepypasta also goes into detail about the leader of the nearby town's daughter and her curiosity leading her to a curse from the witch, trapping her in the forest and thus becoming the voice of the forest. That's why when you enter Elix Forest, you're warned and even the trees seem to be weeping and moaning, just watching as the witch turns each new helpless child into a gift to the voice of the forest. Number two. Best friends forever. As much as I enjoy the hacked games and the dramatic stories that people tell using Pokemon locations, this one is especially freaky. It's a tale of a girl and her best friend. That friend was a Torchic named Blue. The player would always play with her real life friend Talia, but when Talia said that she didn't want to be friends with her anymore, the player just transfers that companionship to her Pokemon characters. Playing night and day, one day Talia snatched her Game Boy out of her hand 
and threw it to the ground, and was about to crush it with her foot before the game just lets out a loud screeching noise. Talia turns pale and runs away, and her friend Blue's stats also change as well, from likes to sleep to angry. And after moving on to new Pokemon games, the player said goodbye to her old friends and started anew with a Mudkip named Red. As she continued to buy new games, she would bring over her best players from previous versions until she remembered she forgot about her old friend Blue. When starting up her old Pokemon Ruby game, a strange message came on the screen that just said, you promised you wouldn't replace me. This is where it gets weird. Then she begins having a conversation with Blue, where the Pokemon is responding on the screen to everything she says. Then Blue asks if Talia is still mean to her, even saying that it got very angry. The player decides to carry Blue over to the new game, but first, she's asked by her mother to pick up a pie pan that she lent to Talia's mother. The girl runs over to Talia's home, but there's no answer. And when she hears a scream, she runs into the house to find Talia with burn marks all over her body and a knife in her neck. Her parents were also hung in the basement. She finds Talia's little brother hiding who tells her that they were just watching TV when a loud beeping noise went off and Talia was just dead. She rushes home and on her DS is a text from Blue saying she was mean to you. She deserved it. She wakes up around 3 a.m. to a beeping noise similar to the one Talia's brother heard, and it's blue. All of her Pokemon begin disappearing, and a text appears, now we can be best friends forever. Suddenly, she wakes up in her bedroom, but she doesn't recognize anything. She runs downstairs to see a lady she doesn't know, and the woman turns and says, good morning, honey, you're finally awake. Our neighbor, Professor Birch, is anxious to meet you. Number one, Pokemon Black. This is an infamous hacked version of Pokemon. It begins normally, except with a fourth option for a Pokemon being Ghost. If the player selects Ghost, it starts at a level one and is only capable of one move, Curse. When the player uses Curse in battle, the screen cuts to black and only cries of their enemy can be heard. Then, when they return, the Pokemon is gone. When they fought against a trainer, the same thing would happen, except each defeat meant a loss of their Pokeball. And once they were gone, the player could actually use Curse on the trainer. This would replace the character with a tombstone. And after defeating the Elite Four, the game changes again, and a text appears many years later. At this point, where all of these stories begin to get creepy, the player ends up in Lavender Town. Except this time, as an elderly man, standing in front of tombstones. In this post-game world, it's just void of any NPCs, with only tombstones where they used to be. When returning to where they started the game, the player learns that every living thing was dead because the player and ghost had cursed them. Finally, the ghost character appears, but this time, it's again your player. The old man character only has one move and it's struggle. Until almost having no health, the ghost uses curse for one last time attacking the player. The screen then fades to black and upon rebooting it, the game file was erased. Coming in at number 10, The Shadow. This creepypasta is about a gamer who believes Pokemon are stalking him in real life. After his older brother died, he left behind a lot of his old games, and our protagonist decides to play some of the Pokemon games and even continues from where his brother left off. He notices something a bit weird though. All of the Pokemon in the wild that he came across were Gengars, and when entering into battle with one of them, his Pokemon looked absolutely frightened. He continued anyways and when trying to catch the wild Pokemon, it failed. Except oddly a message appeared on the screen that said, leave now or suffer. Creeped out by this, he shut off the Game Boy to try to get some rest. And as he was trying to fall asleep, he could hear a demonic laugh coming from the Game Boy. Just as he was about to get up to check it, he saw big glowing red eyes and a shiny white smirk in the shadows of his room. Terrified, he closed his eyes and ran to turn on the lights. But before he could reach them, he tripped breaking his ankle in the process. That's when he sees his Game Boy light up and a text box appear beside a Gengar that just said, I guess you chose suffer. Number nine, abandoned Pokedoll. This Pokemon creepypasta is an interesting take on what happens when a once beloved Pokedoll gets left behind. It felt like if Toy Story 3 was a horror movie. The story begins simple enough from the doll's perspective of loving its owner and how it was its favorite doll. And as time passed, it became forgotten and it was eventually thrown in the trash. That's when the story takes its dark turn. The doll actually comes to life and seeks out its previous owner. When it arrives at the house where it once resided, it finds a ton of new dolls scattered around the room. It then goes on a rampage, destroying the other dolls and eventually slitting the throat of its previous owner. Number eight, let me serve you. 
This creepypasta is about a Pokemon event that happened where gamers were given the opportunity to have the Mew character as part of their new event release. The gamer decides to level up the rest of his Pokemon before using Mew, but for some reason, Mew keeps jumping into battle. Even after moving him to the bottom spot several times, he continuously replaces the first Pokemon with a text box appearing that just says, Mew wants to battle. Another creepy part was that no matter what he tried, Mew would always say, I want to serve you, let me serve you. Now, Protagonist was terrified when he restarted his game to find that all of his Pokemon were dead, and their sprites were grey with a red X over the photo. When he tries to leave Mew in a Pokemon Center, his sprite looks angry, and another text box appears that says, you can't get rid of me, followed by Mew playing the death song. This let out a terrible screeching noise, causing the gamer to black out and wake up in his bed. Believing it was all just a horrible nightmare, he picks up the Game Boy to play again, only to be met with a text box next to Mew that said, welcome back. Let me serve you. And at number seven, will I ever be free? This creepypasta is a short, sad, and creepy origin story for the Pokemon known as Yamask. It tells the tale of a Yamask who rested well as a ghost inside of an ancient tomb, only to be tormented by its rebirth. It could remember its past life, even stating that the Pokemon was once human. It despises its new creature-like form that lurks through the night and claims that all it has left is its mask, the mask that represents its face from a past life. It's disgusted by its new life as a ghostly devil that gives its trainer immense power. The author then ends the story tragically with the last line being, my face was once so beautiful, all I could do was stare at the mask and weep silently to myself. I can never be free. In at number six, you will join us. This creepypasta is about a gamer who loved playing Pokemon Gold and worked so hard to build his team up, when his battery drained, he ended up losing all of his saves. And as a result, he moved on to the newer versions of Pokemon, but when Pokemon Heart Gold was released, he was excited to replay a familiar region. And when he starts the game, Professor Elm greets him by name, except he says, welcome back. This was odd, but he continued. He would then say, they're waiting for you. At this point, he loses control of his character and is now teleported to Lavender Town, where he sees six gravestones, all of which had his Pokemon Gold teammates' names written on them. They rose from the graves except in a more pixelated Game Boy Color version, each one confronting the player that he had forgotten them and left them behind. Then one addressed him by name, saying, We are yours, so if you will not permit us to join you, you will join us. Immediately after that, his sprite began doing the dig animation, causing the screen to go completely dark. In at number five, loss of purpose. This heartbreaking creepypasta is about the characters in the Pokemon game and what happens when they're left behind. Our protagonist picked up an old copy of Pokemon Red, but noticed that after every trainer or enemy he defeated, they would just say, now I shall stand forgotten. This creepy message was alluding to the fact that once you move on in the game, they remain in place with no real use. Eventually our gamer comes into an odd battle with himself. After losing the battle, the enemy then says, Your purpose has been served. End it all before you exist alone forever. And when he tried to start a new game, he would only get a message that read, The dead do not return. It wasn't until that message that our protagonist realizes the character's fear of a loss of purpose. In at number four, Hole Again. This creepypasta is about a gamer who was playing Pokemon Black and wished to capture a rare dragon Pokemon that was said to be lurking in the caves. And although along the way he was faced with many creepy signs that warn the dragon needs flesh to survive and to become whole again, he kept seeing this whole again phrasing everywhere he went. He wouldn't come to realize its meaning until he finally battled the mysterious Pokemon. And while in battle, when one of his Pokemon would faint, a piece of them would then now be attached to the enemy's sprite, thus making him whole again. Number three, the truth hurts. This strange occurrence happened when a gamer was playing Pokemon Black and was faced with the creepy as hell Pokemon. When he gets to the final showdown with N, he's faced first with a battle against a wild Rashiram. He knew that his Pokemon weren't adequate enough to defeat this enemy, so he chose to run instead. But to his surprise, a text box just came up that said, would you like to give a nickname to Rashiram? Confused by this, he just names it Truth. And then it was added to his party. Following this, a cutscene showed Rashiram killing N and then using his blood to write the words truth hurts doesn't it 
And at number two, it's just a game. This creepypasta is about a gamer who comes across strange shape-shifting Pokemon. And at one point she believes she sees a Clefairy until it suddenly changes into a Gengar. And then the Gengar just lets out an evil laugh before disappearing. Then, while in the rock tunnel, she's confronted by another Pokemon who at first appears to be an Onix that soon changes to jet black with glowing red eyes. Fully believing at this point that she may have purchased a hacked copy of the game, she continues on to see what else it offers. The dark turn happens happens when she's faced against an unknown trainer named Aaron, who shockingly resembles her best friend Aaron in real life. And when the battle begins, Aaron first uses a Gengar, and then an all black onyx, and then her final pokemon was the buried alive character. That's when the Aaron character begins to decay like the buried alive character, and as the screen flashed red, she threw her Game Boy aside to call her friend. Her friend Aaron tries to calm her down saying it's just a game. So once she's calm, she returns to the Game Boy to see the Aaron trainer on the screen facing her with the text box that said, it's just a game, right? Lastly at number one, Life Force. This creepy tale is about a sinister Litwick. A trainer and her Pokemon were traveling through a dark cave when they saw a flickering light in the distance. The Litwick approached and agreed to help guide them through the tunnel. What they didn't know was that Litwick would be slowly draining the energy from her Pokemon. And when her Duat finally fainted and died, she desperately tried to reach for a Pokeball to assist her, but Litwick wasn't having any of that. The Pokemon then knocked her down onto the ground and as her energy was rapidly fading, a text box appeared on the screen that said, Death shines like a candle. In at number 10, Battery Ditto. This creepypasta was written by an unknown author on the creepypasta wiki page. It's a story about how Team Rocket was experimenting on dittos using several of them to try to create a new Pokemon. They would keep them in cramped cages wired with electricity and if they ever made a peep, they would be shocked almost to death. One night a security guard was falling asleep so he released his RK9 to watch over them. When he woke up from a loud scream he discovered that a ditto had bred with the RK9. After several weeks of the ditto not changing back to its original shape, the dark looking RK9 gave birth to an egg. When the egg finally hatched it was a Pokemon that they then called Houndour. With this new discovery of birthing Pokemon, Team Rocket rapidly began trying to replicate the process, torturing the dittos as they went through it. And while some results were successful, most led to the death of many Pokemon. Word traveled fast and soon the lab was destroyed, releasing all of the trapped dittos and the newly created Pokemon. However, this did not stop Team Rocket. They continued torturing any ditto that they could find and still, to this day, are attempting to manipulate them. There is no end to the mutations that they can force on those poor, poor battery dittos. And then number 9, Mewtwo. This creepypasta story is based on an original tale found on Tumblr.com. It's about a gamer who picks up a copy of Pokemon Blue and when he begins playing, a Mewtwo starts stalking him. Every time he entered into the grass, he would be thrown into a battle with a level 70 Mewtwo. And at the time, all of his Pokemon had very low levels, so sure enough, the Mewtwo made quick work of his party. However, the strange thing was that when Mewtwo defeated one of his Pokemon, they were completely wiped from his party. He continued to reset his device, but nothing worked. They were all still gone. Oddly, upon restarting, the Mew glitch occurred when the gamer managed to make it to Lavender Town without running into the Mewtwo. This glitch would keep Mew in your party no matter what. And when he inevitably ran into the Mewtwo again, his party was wiped out, leaving only the Mew to face him. When both were down to just a sliver of health, the Mew used explosion, causing both Pokemon to faint and the screen to go black. Upon restarting, the Mewtwo was there and with a text that read, what have I become? It then used struggle on itself, resulting in a Pokeball containing sacred ash to remain in its place. The gamer used this to revive his once defeated party and would come to the revelation that maybe Mewtwo isn't just a monster but a Pokemon with a compassionate heart after all. In at number 8, Mount Silver. This is a creepy yet somehow touching story about the ghost of your rival in the first Pokemon games. It's known that years before you meet Professor Oak, he trained your rival Red to reach Mount Silver. What's unknown is that once Red was there, he was never heard from again. And upon failed attempts at contacting him, Professor Oak travels to Mount Silver to discover that Red has died. What he sees though is the spirit of Red and his ghost simply utters, help me. Oak knew that he needed to find a trainer worthy enough to make it to Mount Silver in order to free the spirit of Red. The Elite Four are positioned strategically as your last test to prove your worthiness as a trainer. When you finally meet Red at Mount Silver, he's surprised to see you, and with no words exchanged, a battle of epic proportions ensues. When you have won the battle, Red says nothing, and before disappearing from your view, he has a faint smile, almost to say, 
Thank you. Number seven, here lies Giovanni. This creepypasta is based on a story called Colorblind found on the creepypasta wiki page. It's a tale of a gamer who falls deep into a hack copy of Pokemon Yellow. In the game, the main character is named Dane and he has a Pikachu named Laddie. The gamer finds out that this storyline is much different than he's ever played. It follows Dane, Laddie, and another traveler named Delia who travels with them throughout the game. And after becoming somewhat famous for his successes in battles, he's asked to become the gym leader for Viridian City. He then hears a snap and his game shuts off. But when he restarts it, a text box appears that says one year later. His sprite is different. He's now the gym leader, but his Pikachu is missing. The gamer soon comes to realize that Laddie had passed away in the year that Dane was the gym leader. He has one last interaction with his old friend Delia who doesn't want anything to do with him after his neglect led to the loss of Laddie. He gives her his mother's old house in Pallet Town and decides that it's best if they just part ways. Then, once again, the game clicks and shuts off. And when the gamer restarts, Dane Sprite is now wearing a striped suit and has much more defined mature features. The game takes over in cinematic fashion and brings Dane to the Pokemon Tower. He says one last goodbye to Laddie and a text box appears that says, I will never find another you, but a Pikachu I will find. I will form an organization to purge Kanto for me. I came as Dane, but I will leave as another. The Sprite walks along the tombstone, stopping at one where a text box appears that says, I must find a name appropriate to depart with. The tombstone just reads, here lies Giovanni. Number six, Nightmare's Revenge. In this creepypasta story from the wiki page, a gamer has an evil encounter with a rogue Gengar. He first comes across the Pokemon in the wild, and when he catches it, he names it Nightmare. And after regular life events took over, the gamer never really had time to play his Pokemon Soul Silver. And when he finally picked it back up, the Gengar was no longer in his party. And in front of him was his rival curled up in a pool of blood barely alive. With his last words he said, Ethan, a Gengar attacked me. He said something about finding a guy named Red. Here, take this. What he gave him was a crucifix of some kind. And after tracking down the Gengar, he battled with him, except the Gengar somehow knew the gamer's real name. He said, tell me Ben, do you still care about me? Ben answered by just hitting the yes option, but Nightmare didn't care. He wiped out Ben's Pokemon, and with only his sprite left on the screen, Ben remembered the crucifix. He used that, and then the Gengar sprite appeared shocked as it sunk into the ground, leaving a text box that said, Nightmare has died. And as the credits rolled and Ben in complete shock, he was about to shut off his Game Boy when Nightmare's red eyes filled the screen and a demonic voice said, I wouldn't celebrate so soon, Ben. For as long as you live, I will haunt you. Number five, divulging into madness. This next creepypasta story is about the brainwashing that Pokemon had on the brain of a young girl. Her parents bought her a Pokemon game to fit in with her new friends at school, but what they didn't see coming was how isolated it actually made her. She was obsessed with it and only took her eyes off the screen while sleeping. And one night the parents snuck into her room to see what was so appealing about the game. They discovered that she had only been playing for 13 hours. but. That didn't make any sense because since buying her the game months ago, she never put it down. And when the little girl wakes up, she starts her Pokemon game, but from this perspective, we see that the game has been talking to her. And the character Red told the little girl about her parents sneaking into the room to play the game and that they needed to be taken care of. Obsessed with the game, she obeyed. And when her parents greeted her in the kitchen, she grabbed the knife from the drawer and as the game instructed her, good girl, now finish him. She quickly slits her father's throat and with her mother in disbelief, she desperately tries to convince her daughter to drop the knife and the Game Boy in her other hand. Red Band says, now darling, don't listen. She wants to take me again and who knows what she'll do. With her mother now trying to run away, the girl throws the knife hitting her mother in the back. Red Band says, your suffering ends now. Now we can be friends forever. In at number four, tick, tick, tick. This creepypasta story is about why beating Pokemon may not be such a good idea. Our protagonist plays his way through the game and after every gym leader he defeats, they all say the same thing. Tick, tick, tick. He is waiting. Every single time they say that. Before he is about to face Red at Mount Silver, his sprite says, for the sake of you and me, the ticking needs to continue. He ignored the message and decided to find out exactly why the trainers were warning him of Red. And when he defeats Red, a text box appears saying, tick, tick, boom. And just as the gamer is reading the word boom, his Game Boy sends a jolt of electricity, shocking him so much that he drops the game. And when he picks it up, the save file is corrupted. 
That's when he pieces together his character's last message. When you defeat Red, there is nothing. The ticking was leading him to that. As long as Red was undefeated, everyone in the game would still exist. Beat the game, and you destroy their world. Hence his character saying, for the sake of you and me, the ticking needs to continue. Oddly, he can still hear the subtle ticking noise wherever he goes. Even with a digital clock, he hears tick, tick, tick. Number three, Ghost Mirawak. This story is based on a creepypasta from the wiki page and, like most others, has an unknown author. I wish I could give credit, but it's not there. But it's about a gamer who managed to catch a ghost Mirawak by using a hack of infinite Master Balls. Amazingly, Mirawak stayed in his party but was simply classified as a regular Marowak. However, the consequences were worse than he thought. With the ghost Marowak now in his party, the gamer lost everything. All of his previously caught Pokemon, every TM, every HM, everything. Any time that he would enter into the grass, he would always come into battle with a Cubo. Every time. He restarted the game with hopes of it fixing his mistake of choosing to cheat the game. But when he started, his sprite was now replaced by the ghost Mirawak. And every time he hits any button, the poor Mirawak lets out a cry. A cry that will haunt him forever. And at number two, poor rival. This creepypasta is more of a history lesson on your rival, but it still remains something to consider when playing the game that may creep you out. When you meet your rival in Lavender Town, he's actually there to lay his fallen Raticate to rest the one Pokemon that you actually defeated in your last meeting. Instead of blaming you for his loss, your rival channels his hatred for you into becoming the Indigo League champion. However, before he can do that, you beat him once again. And at the end, your poor rival is scolded by his grandfather while you receive the professor's praise. Throughout the game, you manage to crush your rival's innocence, crush his dreams, and steal away the love from his own grandfather. The author then ends the story by saying, Maybe he's a ghost that can't leave, or just an orphan who lost his Raticate in a freak accident and can't stop thinking about it, and never leaving until death itself can rid of it. But that's how it goes. Or maybe it's just all in your head. <coughs> Lastly in our number one spot, Everything Dies. This creepypasta is based on a story by an author known as Flaky Porcupine. Great name. It's told from the perspective of a young Paris Pokemon, who at a young age lost its father. The Pokemon's mother would tell the young Paris that everything dies, sweetie. It's what we were born to do. Confused by this, it tries to lead a normal life in the woods, wrestling with other Pokemon, but with each day it can feel the parasites on its back growing and taking control of its body. And when it finally is captured by a trainer, to which it refers to as a two-legger, it continually hears the mentioning of the number 24. What that Paris doesn't know is that the trainers are talking about the level in which Paris evolves. And when it's experiencing its evolution, the trainer says, it's okay, everything dies, which finally makes it understand what its mother was talking about. The author then describes the transformation by saying, my body suddenly glows in an intense white that would blind one's eyes before I too become just like my brethren around me. It felt great pain, that of a thousand knives piercing its body. The last thing it hears is congratulations, your Paris evolved into a Parasect. A critical hit. This creepypasta is based on a story called Ashamed and is written by an unknown author on the creepypasta wiki page for Pokemon. It begins with a boy waiting for his dad in the car and while waiting he decided to play on his old Game Boy. While in the car he locked the doors and turned on the radio to avoid the silence while playing. His team was fairly well established except for this one gold duck that he had. Trying to level him up he would keep him in his party but only use it on rare occasions. And while training for the Elite Four he came across a shiny Persian Pokemon and excited to catch him, he knew that he would have to knock his HP down to just enough without letting it faint. To make that happen, he used his Golduck. However, to his shock, the Golduck ended up finishing off the Persian. He screamed at the Game Boy and couldn't believe that this Golduck just made him miss an opportunity to catch a shiny Pokemon. The next time he tried using the Golduck, it would miss every attack, and suddenly a text box appeared that read, Golduck is ashamed. When this happened, the radio in the car went to static and a fog began to settle around the vehicle. And when the boy looked back at his Game Boy, he was now facing the Golduck. A loud blare of white noise filled the speakers as the Golduck attacked his sprite, causing his trainer to faint. The screen then went to black and now every time that he turns on the game, the only message he gets is, it was a critical hit. 
Come follow me. This creepypasta was written by an unknown author and it's quite long so I'll do my best to summarize it for you. When Pokemon Red and Green were released in Japan around February of 1996, there was a strange peak in deaths for the 10 to 15 year old age group. They were usually found dead by hanging themselves or jumping from tall buildings. Investigators believed it was linked to the Lavender Town Syndrome rumors, but upon inspecting the games, they soon found out that the kids playing the games were rather low, meaning that they hadn't even had time to reach Lavender Town before all these terrible things began happening. Upon further investigation, they discovered that a programmer for the company had committed suicide and when they searched his apartment, things only got more creepy. There were crumpled up notes everywhere with the words do not enter, watch out and come follow me in bold. Before the investigators were eventually killed themselves after looking too deep into the game, they discovered that the programmer had placed a code in the tall grass before you meet Professor Oak. A decade later when a retired officer reopened the file on the case he attempted to find out just what happened. When you enter that tall grass, it ends up showing text from your deceased loved ones, filling your head with voices that repeat the saying, come follow me, forcing many to take their own lives in hopes of either rejoining their loved ones or perhaps just to end the voices in their head. Blue Tears. This next creepypasta is based on a story written by a user named I'm Dead. While exploring a yard sale, our protagonist finds a Pokemon Blue cartridge with the word Tears written on it. When he booted up the game, he chose the previous save to see where the owner had been at with the game. However, he was met with an odd text box that read, I've been robbed of everything. My title is champion, my grandfather's respect, even my Pokemon are dead because of you. I won't stand for this. I will come find you. When playing through the game, the character Blue seemed to be on a mission for revenge. He watched as the character took control traveling to Mount Silver and when he reached his destination he engaged in a fight with his rival. However, there were no Pokemon involved, just the trainers. The only option available was murder and when he selected that, Blue ruthlessly killed his rival and then took his own life. Just like that, our protagonist's nose began to bleed and the game shut itself off. The following day on the news, he saw a terrifying headline, it was the man he had purchased the game from. He had murdered his wife and then took his own life. The gamer couldn't believe it. Could it be the game that was doing this? He ends the story by saying, I'm next. I don't know how much longer I have, nor do I know who will die at my hand. But you deserve to know this. Never play Blue Tears. A difficult task. This next creepypasta was also written by an unknown author and is about the demolition of the Pokemon Tower. A protagonist in this story is one of the 20 workers who had been tasked with taking down the Pokemon Tower in place of a new radio station that was to be built. He was an average man who said that the last time he had been to Pokemon Tower was to lay his gold duck to rest. His gold duck had jumped out of its Pokeball and bumped into the wrong electrode, causing him to face an untimely demise. And as they were tearing down the tower, it also meant digging up up each of the Pokemon's graves to move their caskets. And while the demolition was happening, he began to hear cries of lost Pokemon, and even swore he could see the ghosts of these long deceased Pokemon hovering behind each of the workers. He eventually decided to quit because he couldn't bear to continue tearing up these Pokemon's graves and stacking their bodies like garbage. They belonged to a trainer at one time, they had a life and now here they were just disturbing their peaceful rest. Why? Because he needed the money? When the radio tower was finally built, he refused to listen to it and didn't want any part of what took place after he left. One day he ran into one of the workers who had stayed and he looked like he hadn't slept in weeks. He kept saying that every time he listened to the radio all he could hear was his lost Pokemon crying out to him. Apparently so did all of the other workers who had laid their Pokemon to rest there. If they listened late enough they would hear the pain and protesting, the growling, the sobs and the wails of their poor departed Pokemon's restless souls. He was happy he had left when he did but, but for those who stayed, they were forever plagued by that difficult task. This final creepypasta was again written by an unknown author and is based on the story called Crushed. It's about a gamer who received the game Heart Gold for Christmas. They were so excited to start a new Pokemon game and decided to transfer over their Dratini named Ryu from the Soul Silver game. One day the gamer couldn't find Heart Gold anywhere and when their dad came in from shoveling the driveway he said, hey did you lose this? They eyed the small cartridge in his hand, the protagonist even asked their father if it had been damaged by the snow. Unfortunately, when their father was moving the car, he had ran over the game and found it in the tire tracks. They grabbed the game quickly and ran upstairs to their bedroom to boot it up to check on their beloved Pokemon. It started up normally, but something was different. The screen was now black and white, and while in the game, there were no NPCs anywhere in sight. All of their Pokemon seemed to have fainted, and their sprites looked 
horrible. Almost as if the pixels had been twisted. Their Leafeon's leaves seemed to be dripping with a blackish liquid and its eyes were just empty sockets. More importantly, they wanted to make sure that their Ryu was okay. And when checking on it, the Pokemon just said, Ryu is crushed. Beginning to now cry, they pleaded with the game repeatedly saying how sorry they were for letting this happen. And again, more text boxes appeared, Ryu is cold. And then another saying, you left us to die. And then another, he crushed us over and over and over. Those words over and over began to rapidly fill the screen. The screen began to flash. Black bars appeared almost as if this screen was in a widescreen mode. The black bars slowly closed in as the buildings in the game fell to the ground and screams of Pokemon blared through their speakers. One last message from the Ryu appeared that just said, how do you like being, and then nothing followed. Confused and upset, they threw their Game Boy aside, wiping their tears away. As they wiped their tears away, they stared at the ceiling. The gamer let out a scream that could have been heard by every house on the block. Written on the ceiling in bold letters was just the word crushed.